Hello and welcome to our second edition of Cape Ann Art Waves. Uh, to, I'm Jacqueline Ganim DeFalco. I'm your hostess for the day. I'm sharing this show with Christine Fisher, who you'll meet on another week's show. We're here to find out how artists are inspired and also the types of uh, activities that are emanating from the time that we're in today. What's next? Looking into the future. Uh, and we have special guests each week. And today our guest is Stephanie Cole, who has a very unique artistic genre. So rather than even try to explain it in my words, I want you to hear directly from Stephanie. Stephanie, please introduce yourself. Tell us about your artistic background and the type of work that you're doing. Well, first I'll wave because it's Art Waves. And yes. <laughs> yeah, for, years, for years, I was a painter, and uh, I painted until that just didn't do it for me anymore. And mm -hmm. I kind of took inspiration from what my life was at that point. We were rehabbing an old house, and I learned to shingle and to lay mortar and do all sorts of things. And it felt good. It felt good to build things. Also, this is an antique house, and you're actually in it right now, because <laughs> when I brought the uh, computer out to the studio, I got no reception. So I set up a little staging here in the house, so you get to see some of the age of the house behind me. <clears throat> so some of my materials I actually dug up in the yard. It's fantastic, because the house is uh, dated to about the time of the American Revolution. And I relate to old things. I'm an old thing myself. And uh, I, like, I like materials that have a patina. Okay. I have a patina at this point. <laughs> and uh, so my background is formal training, although I was born an artist. I will always be an artist. My father was an artist. And uh, I did go to art college. I went to the California College of Arts and Crafts for three years. And uh, when I married and we came back east where we emanated from, and I feel very much at home here, um, I managed to finish my education with a five-year degree at the Hartford Art School, the University of Hartford. It was a five-year degree for the Bachelor of Fine Arts. And I majored in painting and I kept enough credits in teaching that I was able to teach here in the Rockport Public Schools for a while. And that okay. was wonderful. Well, you know, you talked about materials, Stephanie, and I think materials are a huge part of what you do. So maybe you could be really specific with us about the materials and also describe the actual genre that you are in, because I find it falls in between a lot of different things, but painting is one thing I wouldn't even that's the last thing I would be thinking about when I look at your work, but I want to hear it from you. And actually, I feel that everything I do is painting because it's all about color, light and dark, the influence of one thing to another, uh, the arrangement. Uh, I feel like I'm painting with stuff. Mm, uh, good. I've always loved things that have meaning. Mm. And uh, if you look to my side here, this ridiculous looking figure, uh, that's more of a whimsical thing, but that was a pair of pants that uh, I did not like to see get to be so bad. <laughs> so bad. Okay. I when, when we wear out clothes, they're so horrible that we can't even donate them to charity. So <laughs> I turned it into a person and the person is called Favorite Pants. So sometimes clothing, um, we have inherited stuff from my mom who saved everything, child of the depression, mm -hmm. things from my husband's parents. So I have a lot of old stuff. Okay. I used to have an antique shop for a while, and so I managed to save things from there. As to the genre, um, that was always a big question because mm -hmm. early on when I would approach a gallery or someone I thought might help me show my work, they wanted to put a tag on it, and there was no tag. Mm -hmm. So finally, uh, I just said, I'm out of here. I'm out of consulting with anybody. I'm just gonna do my thing. I'd worked mm -hmm. hard, I figured I earned it. So I just squirreled myself away, eventually mm -hmm. at a studio when I was in my 60s. Mm -hmm. 
I just, never too late. <laughs> and right. I didn't have the gift of doing what I wanted. Right. Let's go back to uh, our favorite question. Uh, because I, I had the honor of seeing your work in your studio maybe 10 years ago. And it was a big story. Everything behind your work is a big story. And it's your life story, really. Um, almost could tell everything about you for, if we could follow the, you know, follow the story. But it felt very private to me at the time. And I kept saying to myself, when will the world ever get to see this amazing art? And then I was so excited last year when you had your show at the Cape Ann Museum. And I know you gave a lecture and I had the chance to be in the room with you. And now you have this expansive show at the Fuller Craft Museum. Yes. So what was the turning point for you? How did you decide to have a coming out party at this point? <laughs> So. Well, I wanted my work to be shown in museums because mm. museums are non-commercial, although they need the money. But mm -hmm. uh, I saw that as the place for my work mm. for people some who really care about uh, getting involved into the art. They make the effort and they mm -hmm. come from all forms of society. And I love that. Okay. And for an artist to want their first show in a museum, that, that's pretty audacious. But it did happen, and I was delighted that that happened at the Cape Ann Museum, which brought in a lot of local people, and I loved that. I loved it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was my daughters that got me to finally do something about showing my work. They hooked me up with uh, Copperhound, who does photography. Mm -hmm. They liked my work so much they wanted to do a little documentary, so that's even included on my website. And that brought it to the attention of other people. So I would say it's daughters. That okay. got me up there. And I had to agree with it because I produced enough that it, it was time for it to be shown. Right, right. And it must have been fantastic for them to have this experience with you. Oh, yes. After, yes, <laughs> I can only imagine. Uh, so now that you've had it out there, um, oh. and I think you basically just got started a little bit in the, um, you know, at the Fuller, and you should tell us a little bit about that before we, we get off the air. Um, but what, what kind of reactions have you gotten from the public now that you've had a chance to really interact with people at the, muse at the Cape Ann Museum, and I think a little bit at the opening at the Fuller? I'll have to say right up front that women get it the most. And ah, I okay. emotional responses, sometimes tears, absolute tears. So I know I'm connecting with people on a very gut level with some of these pieces. Uh, mm -hmm. They identify with what they see and they tell me. And mm -hmm. nothing is better than that. I have a guest book and mm -hmm. uh, I encourage people to sign it because I want to read what, what they're feeling. Mm -hmm. I've only been to the Fuller once since it opened and uh, there mm -hmm. were plenty of people there and they made uh, a wonderful effort to come over and tell me how they love the work and why. So th that kind of interaction is very special to me. Okay, all right. So we have about three minutes left. So let's talk a little bit more about the Fuller. Tell us what's in that exhibit. Um, you know, when you, you know, have they given you any indication of how people can see it? I'm not sure how long it was actually open before we all got closed down. Um, but what are your thoughts about that at the moment? Well, luckily for me, it runs until October 25th. It was a very long run, thank goodness, because of the mm -hmm. circumstances. Mm -hmm. I think people will need to get out and see things like this. It's called a secular cathedral, and it runs the gamut mm -hmm. of a spiritual journey from a, a very uh, ordinary life. Mm -hmm. But like I say, people identify with that ordinary life. And... Uh, I'm, I'm so glad it runs for a long time. Hopefully right. we'll be free at that point to go. And there's a wide range of material there that mm -hmm. has not been seen. So it will look quite different from what was in the little gallery at the Cape Ann Museum. And is there work that is new since the Cape Ann Museum? Or is it still just the existing collection that nobody has really ever seen? Well, it's a selection from it. I, okay. I can do several of these shows because I have so many things. Next okay. to me, I have one of my most recent pieces that uh, this has to do with women wearing painful shoes, which is oh. out of me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it has the title on the front. It's called Sacrificial. Why do women wear shoes that hurt their feet? That drives me crazy. 
So that's what this is all about. And that's one of the newest pieces. I have a little one that I'm gonna hold up for you. This one came about because I was given this fabulous antique doll body and I had a huge hole in the head. And I thought ah. that head needs hair. And I always use my own hair. So if you can see there are braids going all over the place. Oh yes, I do, I do. Okay. Like, like craziness. <laughs> and the title of this one is Let Me Speak. And it has a very feminine theme to it. I, I don't plan things ahead of time. They just happen. So, so well, yeah. that is a good uh, segue to the situation that we're in right now. Oh, yes. And um, you're obvious, it seems to me that you are actively creating every, every day um, in spite of everything going on around us. Uh, what, is anything new come out of this period for you in terms of? I, I actually have to correct you there because of this and because my family is the number one thing, I do get hmm. my inspiration from them. So right now, the activity is making sure everybody is safe. Uh -huh. And we have our daughter with us from California. We have our granddaughter mm -hmm. whose college closed down in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. We have two buggy cats. So everything is very much containing one another here and being safe. Okay. Out of that, who knows what will come? I never know what's going to pop into my head. Okay. All right. Well, I stand corrected. I just, you know, I mean, because there's, I see these pieces in front of you. So I felt like they were alive, you know, and happening as we speak. But that's, uh, that's awesome. And it, it should be all of our first priority. I'm with you 100%. Uh, so going forward, um, in terms of sort of wrapping up our, our, our call today, any, anything that um, you want to leave with everybody uh, that's going to have a chance to hear, hear from us today? Well, I'm a gardener. One of my best pieces is called Paradise, and Paradise is what's out in my yard because mm. I keep a garden, and I, I don't garden for food. I garden for beauty. And mm. a quote that I heard once, gardeners are hopeful people, and I mm. am hopeful. And so people that can get out and just breathe the fresh air, smell a flower or whatever, do whatever it takes to help you get through this in a good mental state. And that's what we're doing here in Rockport. Well, that is a wonderful message for everybody watching this show. Stephanie, thank you. That's so uplifting. And so to our audience, you'll be able to see this on Channel 12 and also on Facebook and on um, Instagram and on YouTube. So I look forward to sharing Stephanie's story throughout Cape Ann and beyond. Thank you so much, Stephanie Cole, for your time today. Thank you, Jackie.